You're listening to the Study Legal English podcast, the world's first legal English podcast, helping lawyers and law students become fluent in legal English. Hello and welcome to episode 71 of the Study Legal English podcast. I am your host Louise and today's episode is focusing on the physical layout of the criminal courts in England and Wales. If you watch a lot of legal dramas, you may have the idea that our courtrooms are all very traditional with wooden panels, lots of gold and set inside very grand imposing Gothic buildings. Now, whilst these traditional courtrooms do exist in England, there are also many very uninspiring courtrooms and some which are far more modern in style. But what about the layout? How are they set up? Where do people stand or sit? Are there key differences in the layout of the Magistrates Court and the Crown Court? Well, today I'll be answering these questions and covering some key legal English vocabulary related to the layout. Before I get started, I just wanted to do a shout out to Saad, a practicing lawyer based in Saudi Arabia, who recently sent me a message saying, I am a big fan of your podcast. I enjoy every single episode. Thank you for the quality of the materials you share with us. I have always been looking for such a podcast. Thanks a lot, Louise. Well, thank you, Saad. It really, really brightens up my day when I get such lovely messages and it makes my work really worthwhile. So thank you. Don't forget, you can always drop me an email with comments to louise at studylegalenglish.com. Now, I have also had some comments from some listeners who say, hmm, we're not really interested in criminal law. Will you produce some commercial law episodes? The answer is yes. Please just bear with me. Currently, there are a number of episodes on the English legal system, but trust me, there will be some episodes in the future on commercial law, company law, contract law, and other more international law related topics. So just uh, have a little patience with me. So now let's get started. The layout of each court varies depending on the type of court and a number of other factors, whether the court is an old or modern building and how big it is. Despite the variations, however, there are some general features which are always present in these courts, and I'm going to point these out. Firstly, I'm going to tell you about the Magistrates' Court. In the magistrate's court, the magistrates or the district judge sit behind a desk called the magistrate's bench. Often, but not always, the bench is elevated. This means that it is a raised platform so that the magistrates or judge sit higher than anyone else in the court. Behind the magistrate's bench, there will be a door somewhere leading to the magistrate's room. This is where they retire after a trial to reach a verdict of either guilty or not guilty. In front of the magistrate's bench, there is normally a row where you find the legal advisor. The legal advisor, also still known sometimes as a court clerk, is the legally qualified professional who advises the lay magistrates on the law and assists with the court proceedings. For example, it is the legal advisor's job to ask the defendant to enter a plea and to assist unrepresented defendants to ensure a fair trial. On one side of the legal advisor is the witness box. This is where witnesses stand and give evidence. Before giving evidence, witnesses will wait in the witness room. This is a separate room which is outside of the courtroom. In front of the legal advisor and magistrate's bench, you find the bar table where the prosecution team and the defence team sit. The prosecution lawyers sit closest to the side with the witness box. Either side of the lawyers, or sometimes even behind the lawyers, there are a number of seating areas. 
Firstly, the area where the court usher sits or stands. The court usher helps people in and out of court. For example, he or she will direct witnesses to the witness box when it is their turn to give evidence, and he or she will also administer the oath or affirmation. Secondly, there is a place for the probation officer to sit. Probation officers work with offenders before and after sentencing and they assist the courts in finding a suitable sentence for offenders. For example, they prepare a pre-sentence report if requested by the court and they present these recommendations in court. There is also an area for the press. By the press, I mean the journalists or the newspaper agencies who report on the court proceedings. There will also be a public gallery for members of the public because the majority of trials are held in open court. Members of the public may attend the trial and the press may publicise information about the case. Finally, you may have noticed on US legal dramas, the accused often sits with the defence team at the bar table. This is certainly not the case in England. Towards the back of the courtroom or on the side closest to the defence team, there will be the place where the defendant sits. In the majority of courtrooms, the defendant will sit inside something called a dock. There are two main types of dock. Firstly, a secure dock. This is an enclosed and sealed space with floor-to-ceiling walls and with a glass panel in front. It's been likened to a security cage. This is generally used for defendants who are remanded in custody. Secondly, there is an open dock. These are not sealed and instead they have lower wooden walls which do not go all the way from the floor to the ceiling. In the dock, the defendant is separated away from others in court and only in very limited circumstances may the defendant be allowed to sit out of the dock on a chair. Now, the dock is quite a controversial topic in England and it has in recent years been met with a lot of opposition. The rationale in favour of the dock is that the defendant may pose a security risk to others and the dock is a way to ensure the defendant is securely locked away. The arguments against the dock were highlighted in a report entitled In the Dock published in 2015 by Justice, an all-party law reform and human rights organisation. The report argued that the dock is incompatible with the defendant's right to a fair trial, it goes against the presumption of innocence and adversely affects the defendant's dignity. Many criminal defence lawyers also complain that it impedes communication between the defendant and the defence lawyers. For example, if a defendant wishes to say something to his or her lawyer during the trial, the doc makes this impossible. So, I have a question for you, my dear listeners. If you attended a criminal trial and saw the defendant locked up in something resembling a security cage at the back of the courtroom, do you think this might affect your judgment? Would you automatically assume the defendant was dangerous simply because of the dock? Or would you be unaffected by this? Let me know your thoughts and whether you use a dock in your country. Do you think it's necessary to protect the public from the defendant or does it violate the defendant's right to a fair trial? Send me in your comments to louise at studylegalenglish.com. Moving on, let's talk about the layout of the Crown Court. Now, the layout of the Crown Court is virtually the same as that of the Magistrates' Court – However, there are some key differences. Firstly, instead of a magistrate's bench at the front of the courtroom, we have a judge's bench. This is because, of course, in the Crown Court, cases are heard by judges and not magistrates. Secondly, there is an area called the jury box where the jury sit. 
This is because, unlike magistrates' court trials, Crown Court trials are almost always tried before a judge and jury. The jury box is closest to where the defence lawyers sit and it is on the opposite side of the courtroom to the witness box. Thirdly, close to where the jury sit, there is normally a door to a room which is located outside of the courtroom, called the jury room. This is where the jury must retire to in order to deliberate on their decision and reach a verdict in private, away from any other member of the court. Great, so now that we've looked at the layout, I wanted to talk a little bit about the word dock and then mention some phrases which use this word. Dock has many meanings in English and it can be used as both a noun and a verb. You've probably heard it in quite a few contexts without realising it and now that I've pointed it out, perhaps you will notice it even more. As a noun, it can mean the place where the defendant stands or sits in a criminal trial, just as I've mentioned in today's episode. However, it can also mean, firstly, an area where ships stay when unloading cargo or passengers. You may have seen signposts to the docks when travelling, or if you are lucky enough to have been on a cruise, you might have heard something like, this ship is docking soon, using the verb here. It can also mean some sort of device where a laptop or a smartphone or a tablet is placed for charging. For example, if you're travelling and your phone runs out of battery, you might ask someone if there is a docking station to charge your phone. Maybe you've seen signs to a docking station in an airport before. To dock can also mean to cut something short. For example, there is a practice in some countries of cutting short the long tails of certain animals, such as sheep or dogs. And similar to this, it can mean to deduct, to, in a way, cut short. For example, to cut short pay from somebody, to deduct pay from somebody. So I want to mention an idiom related to dock and there are more idioms available to podcast pro members over on the Study Legal English website. So the idiom is to be in the dock. It's quite informal and native English speakers would use this in a casual situation. So the first meaning of this, to be in the dock, is to be on trial in a criminal case. For example, my client is currently in the dock charged with drug possession. The second meaning is sort of similar to the first one, but it's more metaphorical. It's to be under intense scrutiny. For example, if you've done something wrong and you you feel like you are literally a defendant in a criminal trial because people are asking you questions, treating you like you've done something wrong, and maybe you have done something wrong. So an example sentence would be, Brian was in the dock over the mistakes he made in the contract draft. Why don't you try to think of a sentence with in the dock and send it to me at louise at studylegalenglish.com or, of course, on social media. You can find me by searching for Study Legal English. So that's the end of today's episode. Podcast Pro members can access diagrams of each of the courts and many further activities related to this episode. If you're interested in seeing what a Crown Court looks like in reality, you can head over to Derby University's website where you can have a virtual tour of their very own replica Crown Court, which is located on Derby University's campus. I'll include a link alongside some other helpful links in the show notes. So thanks for listening and see you next time.